Good morning. This is Spiritual Parallels to the Natural Body, the Head, and we're still dealing with sight and vision uh, because it is such an extensive, uh, well, as we've noted, that there are more cells uh, given to sight than uh, in any other area uh, of the body as far as cells go. So let's go to our first slide. Vision and sight, co cones and rods. Another use for the rods is black and white vision. Our seeing of things as either black or white in the realm of the spirit or are relating to things in relationship to law is found in the vision. It's how we see a matter. If we only see things as black and white, the problem is in our vision. Let me state that there is a place within the things of God for black and white seeing, but it is the periphery of our vision, or the edge of our vision, not the center of our vision. And too many today make legalism, literalism, the center of their vision. Oh, I wish we could hear that. The cones deal with the ability to see color, thus adding richness to our vision. God, in making our natural vision able to perceive color, speaks to the richness that he wants in our spiritual vision. When we only see black and white, we are colorblind and cannot see the full purposes of God. I mean, some of these statements just by themselves should arrest us. We cannot see the richness of God in our situation. We only see the black and white, pain and sorrow. It is either a situation full of joy, righteousness and purity, or darkness and sorrow and woe. We cannot see the combination of the above. Richness of vision and sight. We only see the richness in God when we observe the variations of color that God placed in the world to illustrate his infinite variety. Oh, I wish we could hear that. I wish we could hear that. Oh, my. Just let me go for a scripture here. I would have quoted it wrong, I think. Now it's giving me a hard time. There we are. We found it. Sometimes it takes a while. Now let's look at this passage of Scripture. Oops. For every good and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness of turning. There's um, another passage of Scripture that I want to look at. There we are. Let's go here. Let's start with verse 9 because this is a vital scripture in understanding some things. 
and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things in Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ, to this intent or intention that now, under the principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God or the variegated wisdom of God, the colored wisdom of God. Now let's come back to our slide. We only see the richness in God when we observe the variation of color that God has placed in the world to illustrate his infinite variety. When we think of richness of color, there's something within us that equates certain colors with certain emotions. Much that God takes us through within it has within it both joy and sorrow, pain and pleasure, and many of the opposites of the emotions. The Apostle Paul was shown by the Lord at the time of his call what he was to suffer for the sake of the Lord. This is something that uh, is it's vital to understand, but it's almost incomprehensible for us because most of us have never experienced this. God, in, in speaking to um, Ananias, when he told him to go to him, the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. I'm going to show him what great things he must suffer for my name's sake. I'm not sure any of us have been there. Okay? I definitely have not been there. Probably wouldn't wouldn't have yielded to it uh, if, if he'd showed me to. I probably would not have responded, would not have come. Now read this emotionally. Thinking through the gamut of emotions that are expressed by going through these types of experiences. In 2 Corinthians 6 and 4, but in all things approving ourselves as ministers of God, with much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Then he changes. By pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers yet true, as known yet well, unknown yet well known, as dying and beholding we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. What a list! What a list. And in that would be a gamut of emotions or color. God wants our vision to be clear. It is not that we're not to see the blacks and whites. They're essential to good vision. But he also wants us to see the richness of color in his dealings. They work in us a richness of understanding, a richness of a ministry and depth of substance that cannot be counterfeited. When we have a color in our vision, we see these dealings of God like the colors of the spectrum. The above list works in us the substance of faith. In our looking at this, we could list the different things and make the color relational. I want to make clear before I do this that this is just an attempt to illustrate what I mean and not should not be used as a measuring rod. So. We're going to go through the colors and we're going to attribute to them uh, certain aspects. This is not rigid. This is not law. This is, what can I call it? Prophetic suggestions. Okay. Violet, this color speaks to seeing the king in all his glory, seeing in situations the lordship of Jesus Christ. 
indigo. In our understanding, this is closely related to the above, but sees the application of the lordship principles in everyday life, letting Jesus rule us in the situation or through us in the situations. Blue, there is given in every situation an ability to see either the human side or the heavenly side, and blue speaks of that ability. Blue is also the prophetic color or the color of the heavenlies. Green, green is the color of life. Jesus came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. This color in our vision speaks of seeing his life in every situation. Now, I have to be honest, I don't always see that. In fact, uh, there are sometimes when I'm going through something that I don't see any of it. Uh, in the nighttime of uh, my soul, in a number of different areas of my life, I've wrestled with God concerning that whole attitude. And God is still working on me in many areas of it. So bear with me, okay? Yellow. In our understanding, this is the color of light. Jesus as the light of the world, but also seeing every situation as the light of God in our lives. Ephesians 5 and 12. Let's look at that for a moment, because it has a, a, an awesome um, not Ephesians 5 and 12, but Ephesians 5 and 13. Pardon me. Um, let's go there. A simple definition in, in, in God of light, but all things that are approved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. I may not like what it shows up. It may show up uh, good things in my life. It may show up bad things in my life. But it is the light of God because God uh, wants me to come to that same place that we talked about in our last scripture. In him is no darkness at all. And when I am in him, as I grow up into him in all things, I come to a place where in me he wants there to be no darkness at all. Now let's come back to our slide. Orange. Orange, the color speaks of warmth. It could also be called the color of love. We, we relate red or scarlet to love, yet in the things of God, it's clear that red has another meaning. This is also the color of fire, which would speak of the purifying fires of God. When we're not colorblind, we can see the purifying power of God in each situation. Then there's scarlet. Scarlet's the color of redemption. If we are not colorblind, we see the redeeming qualities in each situation. Our Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer wants to live in our vision, in our purpose, so that we see everything and the redeeming qualities of God in every situation. Lord, that we might see there are men and women who are colorblind only to only certain colors. This is also the case of men and women in the spirit. There are certain things that they are unable to see in the dealings of God in their lives. Those who have these problems in any of the color coordinates mentioned need to either pray themselves, to pray themselves about God healing them, or have someone else pray for them. It may be that both are necessary. Remember, healing takes time. Miracles are instant. We'd all like miracles. But more often than not, we receive healing. Now the importance of sight, of insight, foresight, and hindsight. According to our text, many more nerve cells are devoted to serving the sense of sight than any of the other senses. This emphasizes the importance of vision to our lives. If in the natural this is so, is it any wonder that God, through different 
many different members of the body of Christ endeavors to give us different aspects of vision. Often what we perceive is that they are a threat to the vision we've received. In reality, they're only a different expression of that vision, giving us larger or more developed insight into a portion of the whole. One of the reasons our vision of the whole is not clear is because many of the body of Christ, destined by God to be part of the eye, a vision-seeing group, are colorblind. There's a defect in their eyes. Sometimes they misperceive. They think what others are seeing is a moat in their brother's eye when it really is a misperception or a beam in their own. Because of the different placement in the eye, the other member has just a little different slant or view and we are threatened by their perception. Uh, one of the things God spoke to me uh, some years ago was reading about the scripture about the moat and the beam. He said, Bill, often the moat in your brother's eye that you see in your brother's eye is a reflection of the beam in your own. I didn't say there aren't beams in others' eyes. He didn't say there aren't reflections or there aren't motes in others' eyes. But I need to examine myself first. Let a man examine himself, not his brother, himself. Now, one of the reasons for this is our insecurity in our place in the body of Christ. When we are secure in our place, we will allow for the perceptions of others and trust God to bring it together with ours in his time, in his way. Unless God designs it so, I do not have to see the whole. I need to ask God to help me be content with the measure of vision he's given, realizing that, a, that seeing is a gift from God to help me function in the body of Christ. Vision is essential to being in the body, but it's not all the body. This is declared by Paul in 1 Corinthians 2.16. And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God has set the members, every one of them, in the body. Underline this, underscore it, ask the Spirit to write in your heart, and then ask the Spirit to help you align with it. In the, he has set them in the body as it pleases Him. Progression in the corporate vision. Our text clearly states that medical authorities do not, do not know how nerve impulses produce living, moving, colorful, meaningful pictures in our mind. Many of God's people today want to understand vision. In the natural body, how vision is communicated and comes together in the head is not understood. Now, if the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly uh, seen being understood by the things that are made, if man does not yet understand how this happens in the natural body, unless God gives revelation, we're not going to understand how it happens in the spiritual body. How the vision in the spirit comes together is not fully understood in the spirit either. How God communicates it to us is not clear. When a man or woman says they've received a vision from the Lord, it's difficult for them to describe it. It's also difficult for us to receive that God has given it to them. Some of this is because we do not understand the ways that God speaks to man. Oh, I wish we could hear that. In the following lessons, we'll treat some of the ways God communicates vision, explaining how he has defined it for us. Then there will be application of it using more teaching on sight. Each of these 
will be attempt be an attempt to try to illustrate the spiritual concept of vision in the individual and vision in the corporate body of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, this is a difficult concept to communicate. Would you come and reveal to each one listening their portion and how to apply it for them? Only your Holy Spirit can do this for us. Then would you reveal to us how corporate vision does not negate what we see individually, but augments that we have seen, and when the Holy Spirit puts it together, the vision is greater than any of us can grasp individually. Help us grasp these truths of vision, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Here are the different websites where their uh, teaching and uh, articles are available to read and, and uh, pray into. Here's our contact information, uh, our snail mail address for those who are not comfortable with communicating via the internet yet, uh, and for those who are not comfortable giving via the internet is Dr. William J. Hurst, 11035 Stone Branch Drive, Riverview, Florida, 33569. Uh, there you may send comments and questions. And if you send a check, please make it out to ISCL. And we will be grateful and you will be able to be receipted at the end of the year for income tax purposes. Our website is www.drwmjhurst.com, and there there are uh, there's product of audios and videos, series and individual messages are available, plus courses that have been written over the years uh, to aid personal development and for those who desire to take courses from uh, and gain credits towards a ecclesiastical degree from the Institute for Strategic Christian Leadership. Uh, our, also on that site is a donate button, and we ask you to please pray and ask God how you can help us uh, in these difficult times we're going through. Um, My email address is there for those who want to send comments and questions or communicate with us in any manner. This is Dr. William J. Hurst teaching all nations the practical word of God and mentoring students one student at a time. May God bless you is the prayer of my heart.